Najee Harris, bottom of your screen. Pickett looking the other way. Throwing end zone. Wide open. Caught. Touchdown. Connor Hayward. And boy, is that sweet. His first NFL touchdown. The son of the late Craig Ironhead Hayward, who played for the Atlanta Falcons. This morning, me and him went to my dad's grave, and, you know, we got to share a moment there. Um, and so I was pretty emotional when, uh, you know, he got the, the, the touchdown. Uh, I don't like to be Mr. Soppy, but, like, that, that, like, really hit me. Luckily, there wasn't a camera on me because I was a mess. Hi everybody, welcome to the Extra Point presented by Microsoft Surface. I'm Missy Matthews and I am afraid to inform Cam Hayward we did have a camera on him. During that special moment, you'll be able to see it later this week on Sights and Sounds on Steelers.com. But we are here to talk about the Steelers stacking wins and their win over the Atlanta Falcons 19-16 to on Sunday. Let's welcome in our panelists to get things started. We have Matt Williamson from Steelers.com and Steelers Nation Radio. JMU Hall of Famer, former Steeler Arthur Motes is back with us and Shelby Cassessi joining us from Steelers.com as well, guys. So um, it is stacking wins. This is a big deal, Arthur. We were talking a little bit about that before we started the show. So we asked fans today which play was their favorite from yesterday because we saw the Connor Hayward touchdown and what it meant. There were just so many great plays. So uh, our leader here between the Connor Hayward touchdown, Najee Stiffarm, Fryer Moose 57 yard catch in the Minka INT that sealed the deal. Moose, he's 40% uh, here. So, guys, uh, I'll start with you. Matt, uh, which one of these plays was your favorite? I think the low-hanging fruit here after that opening is the Hayward situation yeah. for sure. I mean, I was a Pitt fan growing up, loved the loved the father. Ironhead was a great guy to watch. Cam's been tremendous. And now the young pup stepping up too. Good stuff. I thought he played a really good game overall, including his run blocking as well. I'm appalled. This is Pittsburgh. What are we doing highlighting the Connor Haywood or Pat Fromm? Defense. Come on, man. <laughs> think of this, Patrick. The pick that is the game. What are we doing here? But no, definitely got to show love to Connor Hayward, man. I mean, when you talk about the full circle moment, to see that, I mean, that was beautiful. But this is Pittsburgh, and defense matters, and I will always stand for the defense here. <laughs> <laughs> we we like that. Me, might be Go ahead, Shelby. Oh, something tells me Arthur might be a little bit biased on the defense front there, but um, I'm going to go Just with the uh, Friar Muth touch, uh, not touchdown, but the Friar Muth 57 yard run, uh, the near tackle, and then to shake off a couple of defenders. That was really a huge game changer, game changer for me. I'm also going with the honorable mention of the Presley Harvin punt at the goal line. That uh, more so ended the game for me. The interception, of course, was the exclamation point, but you really put the offense, the Falcons offense, in a tight situation there. So honorable mention for the punter as well. And I love that right there because That's that was a, a major play. Absolutely. Shout out to Presley Harvin. Yes, indeed. Special teams matter too, and he did, especially knowing what they were going against with Cordell Patterson and how dangerous he can be in terms of special teams. But, you know, the Najee Harris stiff arm, just the way he was running angry, maybe it's something we're accustomed to but haven't seen a ton this season. Over these four games following the bye week, Matt, uh, is this offense exceeding your expectations right now? Yes, and I had high expectations. I mean, I expected things to get much better post by the opponents are a little easier people forget how young this offense is not not just the quarterback i mean mm -hmm. top to bottom youth um fortunately they've stayed pretty healthy on this side of the ball but this running game and the way harris is running very very impressive yeah it has exceeded my expectations yeah i would agree with that um i think that this is a team that we think can play like this and this was supposed to be the design even dating back to otas and minicamp run the ball be a physical unit but we did kind of lose sight of that for a little bit earlier in the year but now you're seeing it and to see the productivity that stems off of it as well man the ability to take some of these shots downfield i agree i do think that it has started to exceed it uh, the expectation that we were set um, especially coming out of the bye week. But this is good to see, though, and it's something that we do feel like it isn't gimmicky. It isn't something that is an outline. This is something that they can sustain. When you talk about winning the line of scrimmage, that's something that you can bank on. When you're talking about running downhill physical, like how we saw Najee do it along with Benny and Jalen Warren, that travels home and on the road. And I just think that this is a really good space for this team to be in right now, and the confidence is starting to show as well. 
Shelby, they're sitting at five and seven, but stacking wins for the first time. Are they able to keep this run game up and make a playoff push knowing that it is the NFL? And as we saw yesterday, crazy things happen every week. Hey, yeah, it is the NFL, and you take a look at the Steelers' schedule, still two Ravens games, which is kind of crazy to think we're in December and have yet to see the Ravens. Cleveland, uh, Carolina, and the Raiders. I mean, those are all winnable games at this point, especially when you consider Lamar Jackson may or may not be playing on Sunday for the Ravens. We have yet to hear about that. But this is an opportunity for the Steelers to continue building. And when I look at this schedule, you know, it's, it's an uphill battle. There's still plenty of space to go. There's still plenty of opportunity here, but this is a stretch that I think the Steelers can really capitalize on. A lot's going to have to happen with some other games in the league too, but there's nothing wrong with playing your best football this time of year. And in fact, that's what Super Bowl teams often end up doing. Not saying that that's going to happen with the Steelers, but you can start to play your best football this time of year and squeak into a playoff position. And that's very possible. Matt, in terms of the run game, what's something you would like them to improve on as they head into this final stretch that Shelby was just talking about? I guess it's nitpicking a little, and frankly, I don't know that it will improve because of the ball carriers, but longest run of the day was 14 yards. I mean, and in a way, that's a compliment because they ran so efficiently. They only had two tackles for loss, and they both were on Kenny Pickett, one of which he slid and gave himself up. So... They're consistently getting yardage, but not the big plays. And I just don't know that this particular group of ball carriers is going to break 70 yarders, but I'm nitpicking. Arthur, I think, fair, I, was say, I think that's a fair criticism as well. And I do believe that that is more personal related. I do think Jalen Warren probably is the person that is most capable of that, but the opportunities and the chances of that happening just right now haven't always presented themselves. But yeah, I do agree. I think that is probably what they're missing because we're seeing them be able to run the ball situationally. And that was one of the things that I always wanted to look at this team and be able to gauge that part because Yes, you can have a good statistical output running, but like you said, it could be largely because of the quarterback or in certain cases, the scheme. But can you run the ball when it's third and one? Can you run the ball when it's fourth and one and we all know what you're going to do? Can you win in those situations? And we've been seeing this team do that, especially post bye week. So that would be another area where I want to see them continuing to expand upon that type of success. But yeah, I do agree with you, what you're saying um, in terms of just having that home run ability or just breaking off a longer run than 14 yards. We don't feel really explosive in our run game right now. Shelby, it's crazy to think about when Kenny Pickett came in against the Jets, then his first official start in Buffalo, just the stretch that he started with. So post bye week, is he exceeding your expectations and what can he improve on? I wouldn't necessarily say exceeding. I expected him to continue getting better and better each week. And I think that's what he has done. I've noticed so much more confidence from him. He seems a lot more poised, a lot more confident running this offense. I think when he scrambles, he's scrambling to extend the play and not so much because he feels like he's running out of time, which is also a credit to the offensive line continuing to improve. And I'm so happy to see him continue to get more confident and continue to run this offense more efficiently as they continue through the season. I'd like to see him work on the misses a little bit. It's still happening every once in a while in games that are costing them points. I'd like to see him get more confident in his progressions. I'd like to see him continue to build more chemistry with his receivers, but those are all things that I think will come in time. And week after week that I watch Kenny Pickett, he is sort of eliminating concerns that I have in my mind week after week. So exceeding expectations, no, but that's because I expected him to improve and he's done that. Matt, in terms yeah. of the red zone, how can the offense get better there? Wish I knew that answer. I mean, that's it's even expanded. I mean, if you look like the 30 and in is when they start to stall a little bit. And I don't have a tremendous answer for that. Um, I think a lot of it is just a young quarterback situation. I mean, I, I cite Trevor Lawrence all the time. He's making great strides, but red zone still a problem for him as well, even a year advanced from Kenny. Um, I, I think that's something that's going to take time. It's just the field is so condensed that uh, that's a a usual problem for young quarterbacks. Yeah, usual problem for young quarterbacks and sometimes even older quarterbacks. When that field gets when that field gets condensed, 
the execution elevates um, because it's a tight window. The accuracy has to be there. The anticipation has to be there. And everybody has to be on the same page. And at times when you're talking about a young team like we're seeing with the Steelers, they're going through those growing pains. All right, the first go around, you saw right there, you got Pat Fry move open down the scene, but we miss it. But then we come back a series or two later, we hit that same throw opposite side to Connor Hayward. That's just the inconsistencies of being a young player. Not saying that he can't do it because we clearly have seen him do it. But when you're dealing with young teams and young players, as much as we have one offense, you have to get all those guys collectively on the same page and executing at a high level when that field gets condensed like that. And that just takes time. All right, Arthur, good news. We are going to talk a little bit, maybe a lot, about the Steelers' defense. We're going to take a quick Finally. break. Another <laughs> strong first half and sealing the deal at the end. We'll do that when we return right after this. And I thought they controlled the line of scrimmage with their front in the second half and thus the time of possession, and it kind of got tight. Um, but I thought our guys collectively did not blink. They made the necessary plays uh, down the stretch to secure victory, the stops, the earn first downs, the, the late punting down inside the red zone, and then Minka closed it out. It's just good to get comp contributions from all three phases all right, welcome back to the Extra Point presented by Microsoft Surface. Arthur, you're going to start us off here because we want to make you happy talking about the Steelers' defense. You heard what Coach Tomlin said there. It didn't feel as bad as an Indy when it was like, oh, man, this game is starting to get out of control. So what do you take away from the defense's performance yesterday? Yeah, I thought the defense played a good game. Um, number one, when you're talking about that Falcons offense, I thought that they were a watered down version of the Baltimore Ravens offense. And at times, schematically, it is very difficult to handle because of how just RPO and timing and the scheme and what it is. But at the same time, I, I never felt that we weren't going to be able to stop it. Even when Cordell Patterson had success in that second half, I get that they, you know, were able to move that ball like that, but it still never felt like that was going to be enough to hurt us. I never felt that them throwing the ball were going to be able to be successful. And we saw even in the first half when the pressure necessarily wasn't always getting there, Mariota would have the misses. But then when he wasn't missing, that was when the pressure was going to get there. And I love that dynamic. I just felt like our defense was going to be able to handle this scenario. So even though we gave up a little bit in that second half, I still feel like this defense did what they needed to do for another week. And when you look at what they were able to do in terms of points allowed, still limiting a team, what, 16 points? That is very impressive and once again, hard to do on the road in the NFL. Well, and Shelby heading into the Connor Hayward touchdown, his big brother Cam Hayward helped uh, get out of that drive with the Falcons offense on the field with a sack. What do you make in terms of being able to get to the quarterback and the pressure we're seeing in the second half? I know there could be some concern with the lack of seemingly pressure or sacks on the quarterback. It hasn't exactly been their MO as much this year, except for that first game against the Bengals. Obviously, TJ Watt being out for a portion of the season is going to hurt that uh, in terms of a pass rush. But the Steelers aren't necessarily getting that traditional pressure on the quarterback, but I still think they're doing a good job of hurrying the quarterback, of making them feel their presence, and of really stuffing the box, making that pressure up front. This was a run defense that really, really struggled last year and has completely turned this around. And so I think where you may be seeing that lack in a sack or that lack in that traditional pressure, you're making up for it in a really strong front in the trenches. And so when I think about concern about a lack of sacks, um, I don't really see that right now because the front seven is performing so well in stopping that run game. And that's where I think the, the progress has been made from last season. Yeah, and I would also piggyback, Shelby. Yes, the numbers aren't there, but what you hit on is this. They're situationally good in terms of rushing the passer. When it's obvious situations where they need to get off the field or they need to have pressure on the quarterback, they're either blitzing it, where you're seeing this the nipples come down and we'll blitz a linebacker, or you're seeing a guy like Alex Heisman win his one-on-one. -on -one. So we're still getting some of the pressure. It's just not as dominant as we're accustomed because 
we're used to seeing what league leaders in sack 50 plus sacks on the season all these pressures and stuff and it hasn't been that but still we could all attest it man these quarterbacks aren't just sitting back to feel like they have all the time in the world it's just not as frequent as we would or what we're used to seeing that's all. i think this matchup had a lot to do with it as well as arthur mentioned i mean uh, the, uh, there's always a pass rush plan. And I think the pass rush plan here wasn't necessarily getting as many hits on Mariota as possible. It was not letting him escape the pocket. You, you know, he's least dangerous throwing in a drop back passing game than he is as a creator. And I also think you have to mention that I think TJ is fighting a lot of different things and battling through it and is not himself at this point. So I don't know that sacks were the number one goal here. And they don't blitz a lot either, you know, so they're getting home without a lot of blitz and it's working just fine. Shelby, we hear Coach Tomlin talk a lot about complimentary football. Uh, you mentioned Presley Harvin and the punt that pinned them at their own two. Did you see that in terms of all three phases working together yesterday? Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of that starts with the way the offense has been progressing. We saw a lot of three and outs to start the year. And after the bye week, those started getting more sparing, I suppose. And so when you have an offense that can move downfield, even if it results in just three points or it stalls out around the opposite 40 yard line, you are still getting the offense downfield a little bit. Well, what does that allow you to do? It allows you to control time of possession, keep your defense off the field, and also force the other team to start out in a bad spot on their offense as well. And so I think this continues to be that cycle where you have an offense that moves downfield, keeps your defense off the field because a good defense is one that's not on the field, right? And it allows you to flip the field in favor of your defense when they get that chance on the field. And so this continues to happen and continues to happen. The Steelers control time of possession and that's complimentary football for you. Yeah, you're 100% right. And it also forces the offense on the opposing team to have to execute because they're not gonna have the luxury of all these extra possessions. When we're having three and outs on offense, when we're having turnovers on offense, it allows teams to just have extra possessions, extra opportunities for lucky stuff to happen, fluky stuff to happen. But when you're having an offense be as methodical as we've been these past couple of games, now you can see how, hey, instead of you looking at a Colts offense or a Falcons offense and anticipating them having 10 to 12 possessions, now you're looking at them having seven to eight possessions. And it's like, yeah, if you punt on two of those, you turn it over, you're not getting another opportunity to really rectify that. So that's the other benefit of this situation as well. Matt, how does the this... Other Sorry, go real, ahead. Real quick, the, the turnovers are absolutely huge. The time of possession is absolutely huge. You guys had great points. And to back that up, I mean, early in the season or well into the season, the Steelers were dead last in time of possession by a wide margin. They're all the way up to seven. I mean, it's hard to climb, you know, over over the course of a week to week season like this. And then the other note, too, is is I did a little research on the Steelers kickoffs in this, which we were all terrified of going in. Uh -huh. <laughs> Their average return for the Falcons was well under 20 yards. And yeah, they did a great job with that. All that stuff matters. They special teams unit and Danny Smith definitely regrouped following uh, the win in Indy where things got a little dicey there in the second half. But Matt, I wanted to ask you, how do the Steelers keep this up? They're sitting at five and seven, but you can't say, hey, they're completely out of it. There's no shot. So what do you want to see them do during these last few games? More of the same. I mean, I really like where this team is at, the complimentary football, the lack of mistakes, you know, and uh, turnovers is massive here. Uh, there's a couple little nuggets like the Steelers have, rec have recovered the fewest fumbles in the whole league. Well, that, that, they're going to start picking up some of those. I mean, there's some still things that can get better that are sort of fluky luck stuff. Um, I don't have a lot to add. I mean, I think no matter what, we can't lose sight of the number one goal, and that is making Kenny Pickett a better player for the long term. Unfortunately, this team's in the AFC. I, I think the playoffs are a real long shot because of the competition. But that doesn't mean you can't build massive momentum going into next year. Arthur, what about you? Yeah, for me, um, <clears throat> I look at it like this. I want to see this team continue to operate like they know what their identity is. Right now, they are a physical run-first unit that's going to play defense, have really good special teams. They're not going to turn the ball over, and they're going to force you to execute. If they keep playing like that, they can hang with anybody that's on this schedule right now. And that's the beauty, along with what you're talking about from Williamson in the sense of you're going to learn a lot more about this team. Think about what we've learned from this team from the bye week to where we are just now. 
as long as they keep doing this, we get a lot of valuable information about how this team can continue to grow and ultimately what's on the table for this year and then potentially for next year. But either way, I want to see them continue to operate with that mindset, with that mentality that we've been seeing these past four weeks. And isn't it crazy that it didn't feel like that long ago we were saying, what is the Steelers' identity? No one knows. The players Absolutely. don't know. The coaches don't know. And here we sit there, and it sounds simple, but it took some time to get there. And I really think the bye week is where they were able to maybe regroup and put their best point best foot por forward, excuse me, but Shelby for Kenny Pickett, 120 pass attempts, zero interceptions. I think just being able to play clean football is huge for him in terms of getting this young offense going. It's a huge confidence boost, I think, for him. It has to be, especially given that he did struggle with turnovers in his first few games. What I'd like to see the Steelers do is continue to work with that identity. I mean, yeah, it's a pass-happy league for sure, but you can win games in the NFL with a smash-mouth run-first offense and a really stingy defense. And I think the Steelers can continue to do that. Along with that, what comes with a good run offense is opening up the passing game a little bit more. And I think that's going to come with time. That's going to come with building chemistry between Kenny Pickett and his receivers. It's not terrible now, but I think there's a lot of room to improve in the passing game, opening that up a bit more. That's going to come as this run offense, a run first offense gets more competent, but hope to see that come to fruition a bit more here in these last five or so weeks and uh, turn into some points in the red zone too. All right, next up for the Steelers is the Baltimore Ravens coming to Acrisure Stadium. And John, John Harbaugh told the media today that Lamar Jackson is week to week less likely. He'll play on Sunday, but as you know, I think uh, we'll be going through the week uh, keeping an eye on their injury report. So, guys, thanks so much for joining me here today on the Extra Point presented by Microsoft Surface. And to everybody at home for watching, we'll see you guys back here next week.